Hey guys, let's go crazy. I got some cool stuff to share with you. Yeah. 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 All right, so uh, Alright, so I'm just going to begin. Um, hi, my name is uh, Khalil and uh, I'm from a small company called Wubabia that I started uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's been quite an exciting uh, journey and what we do at Wubabia is we actually do virtual reality for uh, real estate, right? So for properties, uh, for renovations, things like that. Um, so there are certain um, areas which we have to pay a lot of close attention to. Um, which may be of interest to some of you guys as well. Right, so just a little bit of background about me. Um, I've been in game development for a number of years, about five years or so. I've worked on um, um, all kinds of titles, like, right, from uh, VR titles to AR, um, web-based games, uh, MMO games, stuff like that. So quite a wide range and it was a really small team of about um, ranging from five to eight of us. So I was able to pick up a lot of um, uh, pieces along the way. I started out as a 3D artist and then I went on to technical art and then from there I picked up some um, development as well. So I kind of put it all together and um, that's how I started uh, this company. So as you can see, right, this is this, this, uh, just some of the pieces of uh, work or just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that I used to do. right? Uh, and it's all Unity. So I've been working uh, with Unity for the past like, yeah, four or five years or so. Um, and um, it's come a long way. And uh, I think that for my, one of my key roles in, in uh, my previous company and right now as well with Uba VR is to make things look uh, pretty, right, number one. And uh, secondly, uh, to make sure that it's, optim it's optimized for every platform that you are pushing it out on, right. Um, with uh, especially, there's so many things to consider when you're talking about VR. Um, I mean, you have your PC-based HMDs, right? Which that one, you, you need some serious horsepower to run. But even then, you can't go all out, right? So when you're using something like Unreal Engine, um, even you have to pull back and you have to pull back quite a bit, you know, to make sure that it's running at like your 60 frames per second uh, uh, minimum, you know, making sure that the experience is not um, nauseating and things like that. So it's been really challenging. Um, what we are, we, we are trying to do is actually bring... Uh, as photorealistic uh, imagery because in real estate um, that's a very very important thing you know uh, from a lot of the feedback that we've gotten um, through the past couple of months uh, one of the key uh, requirements right is for photorealism right uh, a lot of other companies who sell VR for property and for real estate they use 360 um, photos 360 videos right but um, that it, in a lot of people's minds, that's not really true VR because it's not a real like, interactive uh, environment. You don't get to move around and interact with the environments. So um, these are just going to be a few short slides to show you how uh, I progressed from the beginning um, to where we are at right now. You know, I think there's still a way, a, a way to go. And, and just keep in mind that this is all, um, all for mobile. Uh, and, and we wanted to run as well on an iPhone. Um, and a new uh, Android phone, or maybe a four, three or four year old Android phone as well. So a lot of things have to be uh, considered. Right? I'm sure if you guys have any history with doing mobile development, it can be quite challenging um, to get it running well on all platforms. Uh, yeah. So, right. so this is one of the first um, projects that we did. So what we started out doing is like small little renovation projects uh, and then we help the clients to visualize how their house is going to look like. So um, as you can see right, I mean now that I look back on it, I can see that I, I had a very, my eye wasn't um, in tune with like photorealistic um, imagery, you know, being able to render and understanding how to render things realistically because um, later on, I'll, I'll do a short demo uh, yeah, about Unity Light Baking. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have, have uh, tried it. It can be a real pain in the ass. 
Uh, and a lot of people stretch their heads. You go onto the Unity forum, you know, uh, a lot of people have trouble with uh, like like they and they keep changing things all the time. So that's another issue as well. Um, but I, uh, the the problem uh, here is that I I, I try to light it like how I would light like a dungeon, like a video game. You know, too much color. It's not it's not really uh, reflective of uh, reality. You know, so slowly uh, as we went along. Uh, I started to do a little bit more study, started to put more time into rendering, and I think that that's one of my most key uh, focus areas to make sure that the rendering is better and better. So, so as we go along, uh, you can see uh, it slowly, slowly gets, right? So from here to here was like maybe one or two weeks, you know? So you can start to see where the colors like start to come in. It's a bit more natural looking, um, but still it looks great video game, uh, you know? You still, you still don't get that uh, reality. Um, right. And uh, this is another project. So, so you can see here it's coming a bit closer. So we met up with uh, lots of interesting people, uh, like the guys uh, from Spotworks and everything. Who, they are a rendering company and they, they, they are very interested in VR as well. And uh, we took upon ourselves that challenge, right? not just from you guys, but a lot of people, they want to have VR, but in this space, they want it to be they expect it to be like those professional renders, um, which, and if you tell that, and if you tell uh, someone no, we can't do that, right? That's um, they 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 won't, they won't understand that, right? Because they they coming from a business point of view, you know. That I expect it to look this way. If it's not like that, then I'm not interested. And so, uh, being the person I am, I get very fixated on a problem, right? As I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. You know, once we we, we put our minds to that, right? Then it's like. No sleep, you know. I haven't got home in like a month. Uh, I, I live in the office, you know. I haven't slept in two days, and uh, that, that's just the life that you know I've uh, chosen. But uh, I think that in the past, yeah, the past maybe like just one or two months, able to come from like something like this, right? And this is like where we are now, right? Um, picture of the. I'll just give you an example. So this is the uh, actual house. This is the uh, photograph of the house, and it's a uh, uh, it's a it's completed project. Yeah, and uh, this is what we actually delivered to the client. Right. So right, that's. Uh, let's see if I can get this line up properly. But I hope that gives you an idea, right? Of, uh, and I and I don't think that we are even there yet uh, at that level where where like architects and real estate developers expect. But I think that as we keep going along, um, with I think it's just a matter of like that problem solving, right? If you can figure out how to solve that problem, you can find a way to do it. Yeah, you have a lot of sleep and nights, sleepless nights and everything. But at the end of the day, you can be done. Things can be done. Right? So, uh, uh, because of well, my background, working with shaders and all that, you know, start writing or modifying shaders. You know, there's ways to get things to look how you want it to look. Yeah, it's just a matter of figuring it, figuring out how to do it. Yeah. So, uh, all these scenes. Uh, if you guys are interested later, you can try it out. We have, I think, a Gear VR demo of uh, this scene, uh, so you can see whether <coughs> it looks real enough. Yeah. And I'll just, so I'll just go through a bit of my work process. Because I won't be able to go through the whole uh, shebang, but I'll start from um, an empty room, and you guys can just pick up some of the basic ideas, like, like uh, how I approach things. Um, let's see. Yeah. So this is a very very uh, simple scheme. Wait. And um, I think even to get it to this point, a lot of people will struggle because of the approach um, involved. You know, a lot of people. Uh, I mean, even for myself, we end up like complicating the matter, putting in too many lights, change, you know, messing around with things. But you realize, once you realize, it's not so difficult. Um, 
can be done. So I'm going to just load up. Uh, this thing. Yeah. So this is how it all begins. It's not. It's not so clear on the screen. Um, but basically, that's how your scene should look uh, with no lights, right? And uh, a good way to handle things like this, or to handle lighting, right, is to take out, take away all the textures in your scene. Because a lot of time, uh, when we model things, uh, when we when we import it to the engine, it's already it already has all the texture information, right? Um, the the problem with that is that the textures tend to kind of mess with you because it's already got so much information in it and you tend to not get the lighting right right so so one of the approaches i take is that i always start with uh, just white a plain uh, white texture just a diffuse right um and uh that's that's there's a couple of tricks i'll show you but basically i come in with a uh, i just turn everything white and then later on, I'll start adding back the, my materials uh, into the scene. But once you get this stage right, once you get it looking right at this point, right, you really won like 60% uh, of the battle. Then, it, then after that, it's about managing your materials. Right? But this is the most key thing. You know, even if you get your materials right, if your lighting is off, right, that's it. Your, your scene is not going to look right, uh, right. So even now, just like that, um, the screen is a bit dark. But there is already a lot uh, going on. This is just directional light. This is just a directional light. I, but what I did, right, so... I don't know where is my... Normally I have a dual monitor, so... Let me just close the project. Yeah, that's my lighting. So this 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 fellow over here can be a uh, best friend or real enemy at uh, this lighting cat. <laughs> okay, there you go. So uh, a good way. To start lighting the scene, right, is um, you can turn everything off, right, like this directional light, and then you can do like an initial. Um, the you can use the real time GI to just do a quick bake, uh, very low at a very low resolution. And these are all the default resolutions, um, and uh, that should give you enough information to start working. This is a very good place to start, lah, right? Uh, I will, if you want to use light maps I, and light baking, I wouldn't recommend using the real-time GI or mobile. It's not a good idea. Uh, I've got it to work. Um, I have another demo of that. I can show you guys later. So I have real-time lights and shadows and, and uh, time of day changing on mobile. Uh, it works. Um, normally, the shadows will look really bad, but there are ways to get the shadows to look pretty good. Um, but you have to take, you have to, then you can't, you have to pull back on other areas, so it's an interesting tech demo, but it's not practical. So at the end of the day, I think for mobile, a lot of the information will still be baked in. Uh. Um, so I'll just do a quick build. And that should be it. All right, that's it. <coughs> and now you can start to uh, put in your light. So now when you turn on your uh, directional light, you already see some of the global illumination uh, coming in. All right, so <coughs> I see if I change the color. I think it's not really reflecting what's showing up here, but probably if I increase everything, you can see. <coughs> the PC is behaving very weirdly. Yeah, but really you get a sense of like, there is already uh, global illumination going on, right? <coughs> so, uh, depending on how you want to start lighting the scene, directional light is one way to do it. So that will be your that will be your sun, right? Another way is to use a, use a skybox, a <coughs> HDR skybox. That's another good way to start um, baking your scene. So now I'm just going to turn off the directional light. Um, and uh, this, these are some maps that I just downloaded from the asset store. <coughs> oh, I don't have yeah, but these are just some free maps I downloaded. And uh, you can use the information in the maps to start doing the baking already. So.
Yeah. So these these uh, few maps here are available on the SSO for free. Like you can just play around with it and give it a try. Let so me just use the uh, change the ambient source to skybox. Ambient intensity, bring it up and see. So that's so now that's the sky lighting the scene. <coughs> right now uh, you don't see so much color on the projector, but on my screen you can see that there, there's the blue of the sky. So whatever information is there is uh, being casted onto the uh, scene. So like, this is, so it's not so difficult to get to this point, right? As you can see, it's quite fast. Like. Um, but <coughs> the next step is where it gets difficult, uh, um, where you start adding more lights, more information. <coughs> you start messing around with like the, the bouncers and everything. And one of the biggest things that I would always strongly advise against, right, is using, um, uh, the, the point lights. Yeah, I don't generally like point lights, and they don't really work uh, very well with. Uh, actually, none of this works well with the real time uh, GI, but it, it tends to mess things up. Uh. Re reason being is <coughs> you always end up with all these hot spots, uh, right? Uh, and, and I think um, for a long time, I, I myself was very, very. Uh, guilty of using these point lights because you just, you just throw them in and you know, it just works but you have very little control then you end up having all these hot spots like. it's, very, it's not very effective and then uh, you try to balance it out by lowering the intensity then you put more lights you know, lower the intensity you put more lights and then you just have zero control like you start to lose um, control of everything right so one of the tricks I've learned uh, for myself right is actually to <laughs> Uh, create these uh, light tubes or it's just a mesh right you can use any shape you want uh. you can use uh, uh, capsules are really good as well because they don't have the hard edges right <coughs> so if, if you want to okay let's say now I want a, a bounce light right in this in this area over here because it's a bit dark right but <coughs> now if I in increase the uh, the general bounce boost right then everything is going to go up you know, then I, I, I kind of lose because let's say now I don't want, I like the way it's exposed uh, on the outside, right? Because I don't want it to be overexposed. It's already overexposed, uh, right? So, uh, and I bring down my uh, ambient intensity. Yeah, you shouldn't be going up so high here. Uh, but okay, let's say I like the exposure here, but now inside is very dark, uh, right? If I increase the, the bounce uh, boost uh, and the indirect intensity, right? Then everything else is going to go out, and if you don't want that, uh, so that's another thing that everybody, uh, that I used to fall into as well. Everything just gets overexposed, right? So um, this is one of the tricks I've learned uh, to use this and uh, just a standard shader uh, with an emission, <laughs> and that, that's where you control. <coughs> and actually, it works with uh, real time GI as well. So I'll just show you how it works. That's my little. Dagger. Alright, so, so this is gonna be my, my bounce line, right? So actually, it's it's you can control it because you can actually create a mesh for it. So whatever shape you want, whatever the light shape uh, you need in your scene, right? You can model it out, and you can even have it like only emit from a certain surface, right? Because um, if let's say it's just a plane, you will not emit downwards, uh, It's not a, it's not a dual sided object. So I, so for this, I just want a general light. Which I can control better than a point like that. So, let's get my. Yeah. And uh, important thing is that you have to make this a uh, static object as well. <coughs> so it has to be recognized as a static object. And then you will have to turn off the cast shadows and receive shadows. Because you don't want. Because it will be recognized as a regular object. <coughs> and then now. So now if I adjust it, right, it's not, it's not going to affect the scene. So what I need to do is I need to put it static and I rebuild the, my GI. Okay. So now it's taking a bit more time. So yeah, but again, the, the, the real-time GI, I don't know whether any of you guys have used it in your project. Yeah, so there you get something like that. And then from here, right, you can actually start to mess around with the uh, emission values. Uh, 
So this is a very this is, so this is a very effective and simple way. Let's see if it works when I move it around. So I yeah I think because it's a static object, right? Uh, when you do move it around or you rescale it, you do need to uh, rebake the scene because it is recognized as a static object. And later on, you can just turn off the mesh renderer or you can turn off the object, but the lighting should still remain uh, as it is. So I started to use a lot of these uh, in place of real. The, the, the actual Unity lights uh, because of the amount of control it can provide. Um, because even in terms of the intensity, the way these uh, emission objects work, right, it's, it's, uh, it's all like HDR, right? So you actually input all the values. Uh, so, so it's like actual photographic values, uh, which is actually more accurate um, in a physical sense. Uh, so Okay, so I, I know that one of the things that pisses me off all the time is, you know, you always see all the nice Unity promo videos, and then they wow, it looks damn cool, you know, you've got the physical base rendering and everything, but, you know, you try and, and, and you try and apply it, and it works on a real powerful PC, uh, but, you know, it's, it's not practical to use in mobile, definitely not, and, I, and it doesn't seem like there's any push to get those features running on mobile. So we've got to find our own ways to do things like this, uh, and... I tend to not even use standard shaders for most of my materials. So a lot of times I use all the legacy shaders because I find that for mobile, they work the best. Problem I have with standard shader, the standard shader, you know, I think the standard shader like this, right? Yeah, it allows me to do cool stuff like this, right? Uh, and you have all these um, parameters that you can mess about with, right? Oh. It's good in a way and it's bad in a way, like right? <coughs> double edged sword. But the problem I have with um, the standard shader is that it never looks the same on like different platforms. So when you when you build on mobile and you try it on your phone, it always doesn't look like how it looks on uh, the editor or if you build for PC. So that's I don't find it reliable. So generally, all my materials I tend to use is um, um, yeah. I I like to use reflective uh, materials like this, and then I create my own cube maps. Right. So I, I've actually. Like worked out ways to do like pseudo real time rendering, you know. So I have uh, cube maps update to actually show um, the actual reflection based on where the camera is and things like that. So, but those are just uh, are things that you can work out um, when you're doing rendering and you want things like reflections in your scene and everything. Uh, so let me just find. Let me see. Let's find the floor. Uh, what? What? So that belongs here. Right. See, you see, but immediately when I put the floor tiles on, right, then it messes up with my full uh, light mapping already, yeah, right? Because it, it, now the colors are all wrong. Right? So that's where now you adjust your materials to fit the, the scene, right? It shouldn't be the other way around, right? right? So, right. So I, I see. I like that shade of um, blue, you know. And let's say now I have that blue cast. I can even. Uh, Bring in a, a little bit of uh, sun. I can have this kind of uh, uh, yeah, so you have a bit of that. And yeah, yeah, you can not have so much bounce because you already have the bounce there. Yeah, but then it starts to look more realistic, la, Right, it starts to look more organic. And if it looks realistic with a white texture, then you're pretty much good to go. Right. So let's then then I'll look for places that it's a bit dark. Right? Yeah, then I'll add more of these. Uh, Emission dues here. Uh, but they are, but these things have been uh, very, very helpful. Uh. So for this one, yeah, obviously you don't want it to be so big. Uh, do something like that. Uh, so I read the case and see. You kind of see the seed starting to come together. A little quick here. Slide the floor. Am I going? Right. So here is where you adjust things like that. How the see so there is some kind of reflection going on.
know. Sorry, I, I mean, my workflow is a bit messy, uh, all over the place sometimes. So obviously now, okay, let's say this is, if this is like a reflective cabinet, uh, right, then uh, my reflections are, are wrong. Uh. So yeah, so, see, so you see now, you get the reflections working on the floor tiles and everything. Yeah. Very simple shaders. Uh, so these are all, these all can be found in your legacy, right, your reflective, right, bomb, uh, and stuff like that. And uh, I'll show you a quick trick if you want to use uh, Maps. So I, I know now so with the standard shader right, you get things like the reflective probes you know you can have um, the probes in different places and then the probes will interpolate and then you can see the, the refle all the reflective surfaces changing and being uh, accurate but it only works with a standard shader la, so that also pisses me off uh, <laughs> right so you gotta find your own way to do it la, right so uh, there's a little script I can share with you guys where all you need to do is create a point Normally, I would uh, just put that as a child on my camera. I reset that. Uh, let's see, let's see if my camera is there. Yes, okay, so my camera is there. Point. Just normally bring it to about yeah, minus one. And then, if I render from there, I should get I should get an accurate uh, cube map, um, which shows me the reflection properly of what's happening on the outside, uh, right? So what I do is I use this screen. Yeah, so this is a this is a script. Let's copy into this project. So it's a one. Of, it's an editor script. Uh, so I bring it up. Uh, you can okay. For, so for this example, I'll just create a new cube map. Sorry. So cube map is also now placed in legacy, yeah, because Unity doesn't want to use it anymore. Uh, cube map, and then I and then what it requires is for this to be readable. I can set a resolution I want uh, and render from the position. So I will select that position which I defined, right? And then now you can see that it's actually rendered um, the cube map based on that point, right? So now if I apply the cube map to my object here, uh, it should give me a relatively accurate uh, result, uh, you know? So based on the camera, it will be it will be pretty accurate. Uh. So you see whatever on top there will appear below here. So now you have that um, cube map. You then you adjust again, right? How reflective you want the surface to be, right? If you want, uh, if you want to tint the color to you or whatever, yeah. But it's, but generally that's how I, I, I build up my scenes, uh, right? Um, and so <coughs> you can, like for, for for what I do is I find ways to actually update the cube map at certain points during the when you're running the um, when the, the application is being run. So you always should you always give the accurate. Uh, presentation of the reflections based on the camera location. <coughs> so, so if I move the camera around, it won't look right. But 
you always look right from this from this point of view. Uh. That's the idea. Uh, <coughs> so that's actually that's uh, that's how simple my workflow is, la, You know, and then um, from here. Start to apply things, <coughs> and these are all very uh, straightforward things. Uh. Floor here, yeah. yeah. and it's actually it's actually a very simple scene, but with like effective lighting, right? You can actually make it look uh, pretty good. So once you have your base, let's say I'm happy with this now, lah. Right? Uh, I'm not too happy, but okay, lah. Like that, I can freeze my hand. And then, um, from here, then you can start to add all the smaller lights la, in the scene, right? <coughs> so then you can use um, your typical spotlight, la, which are still not great, but they get the job done. Yeah. Okay, right. So so with uh, actually with the uh, real time global illumination, it's very easy for you to set up the scene. Uh, <coughs> and then once you have the scene set up, that's when you will turn that off. You turn on big GI, um, and then you build. Right. Uh, once you come to this stage, right, then you'll face a lot more problems as well, uh, because <laughs> um, another set of settings that you have to deal with. You know, uh, yeah, things like ambient occlusion and everything. But at least you know that. If anything goes wrong, it's not your light set up because you've already set it up over here. You know, it looks as right as it should, as it should look over here. Yeah. <coughs> so, if, if you guys are interested, then I can, I can go into the, um, the big GI part and, and give you guys a bit of uh, info as well. Yeah, if you guys have time, uh, you know, so, yeah? Yeah, some time? Sure. <laughs> really more just to try if you have a demo. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, yeah, I do have a demo. So later, later, later maybe after uh, I'm done. Yeah, you can you guys can come around and give it a try. Yeah. So I have it running on um Gear VR on uh, Google Cardboard as well. Yeah, Gear VR on which device? Um I'm using the S7H. So the most powerful one. Yeah, right? most powerful one. Yeah, yeah. but uh for, for big textures, what is actually do you use? What resolution I use? Yeah. So for the big ones, right? I found that, to be honest, right, actually even 2048 is fine. Um, as long as it doesn't go beyond like, uh, I mean, if you end up with like 20, 2048, then you have a problem, right? Um, one of the things I don't like about Unity, uh, and I stopped doing, I used to be very lazy. I used to, you know, when you import your model, I'm sure a lot of you do this as well. When you import your model, you just click generate um, light map information, right, over here. <coughs> Uh, automatically generate uh, generate the light map UVs, right? And that's actually a very bad practice because <coughs> Unity never ever does a good job at um, generating the light maps. Uh, it, it, it's you are kind of leaving things to fade, and then what happens a lot of times, right, is that you have a lot of light maps, and then you have a lot of unused spaces, right? If you if you if you look at um, let's see, right, any light map here. Yeah, so if, it, if, if you take a look at like uh, this light map, right? This is something that Unity has uh, generated, right? right? This is a terrible light map uh, because there's so much wasted space all around here, right? And it ends up generating for a small scene like this many light maps, right? And you don't need that many light maps. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. Uh. You see all this empty space here? That's, yeah, so that's what ends up happening when you use the automatic. Um, Alignment generation. So for me, um, I used to always just do this because I couldn't bother. But now I actually go into my to to whatever three D software you use, like Max or Maya or, or whatever it is, and I'll unwrap uh, the second UV map, right? So you can decide um, how the light maps should be placed, right? So that's the best practice, um, and also it, you 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 reduce problems like you know sometimes you have those light bleeds, um, like in the corner sometimes. You see, like light bleeding from outside and things like that. Funny, like artifacts. So when you do the the unwrapping yourself, generally you 
um, avoid a lot of these problems. And you can actually plan the space better because let's say I have a large surface, right? Like a, um, let's say for this scene, right? I have a large surface like um, the walls, the ceilings, the floors. I want to give a lot of priority to that. But what, how Unity does it, it just looks at all the space, right? And then it's going to dedicate a lot of light map space to all these areas outside, which nobody's going to see. <coughs> right, so that's a huge waste of, of um, light mapping information as well. So when you are unwrapping it in your own um, software uh, and deciding exactly how to unwrap it, you can actually just, for me, I, I, I normally just have a, I just put a small little tiny uh, space. If I know that people are not going to see that, I'll just yeah, I have a small little space here for all like the outside areas. Yeah. Um, you can actually do that in Unity. So they do have for object you can actually modify like the scale. Right? This this, this does help sometimes. Um, and actually there's a lot of important uh, features here that I think a lot of people overlook as well. So I I spent over the past few months uh, married to this and I, I've had to go in and just yeah, try out everything, right? And the, the thing is the documentation is so a bit shitty, so it's, it's a little trial and error. So scale in light map, that makes a big difference as well. So non-important things, you can really scale it down. Uh, uh, sometimes I want to create like uh, certain effects, like you know, let's say I want to shadow in my scene, right? So I have to create like a huge plane on the outside, but I don't want that to take up any light map space. So I'll just put it at like, scaled as zero. You know, so it's still considered as a static object uh, that is affected by the engine, but it uh, doesn't take up your light mapping space. So this is very important, uh, scale and light map, so you can give a priority to certain things and also important GI. Uh. But honestly, I don't really find that this does much. Uh, it's more of the scale over here. Right, very important. Right, another important thing is, right, um, so you can preserve UVs, right? So if you do unwrap it, then you want to preserve your, your, your UV maps. Right, and if you if you don't, what Unity does, right? Even if you unwrap your own maps, right, it, it will. And I think that this this feature is still bugged at the moment. I think a lot of people are complaining about it, where Unity will still go and do some. They will still mess around with your with your UVs, which is very very annoying. Uh, so hopefully they will sort that out. Uh, yeah. And and in old versions of Unity, I think Unity four, you could actually. Um, use light maps from other sources, like, but it's very hard in, in, um, in Unity 5 uh, because of the way they index the light maps. It's, it's very messy. Yeah. Uh, there are some tools on the asset store that can actually help you uh, <coughs> with uh, a lot of these issues, uh, but yeah, that one's uh, got to explore yourself. So let's say now um, I'm very happy with my, <coughs> light, my light mapping over here, right? Just fill up all the lights. And right now, I can't even guarantee like how many light maps it's gonna end up. Uh, it all depends also like on your big resolution and, and your padding and all this. So let's just give it a try. So I'll turn off my pre-computed GI. Uh, make sure all my lights are set to big. All right, that's fine. <coughs> Directional light, so this will be big as well. And here, and now we big. Um, the cool thing now, right, actually, with Unity 5 that I found out is that you can actually do mix. Uh, so you can actually have um, real time GI uh, with your directional light. So that means your sun is uh, real time. So that means it's casting sh uh, dynamic shadows. Uh, but the rest of the scene can actually be baked information, yeah. So that's actually quite interesting. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you a little demo. Yeah, like I was. I, was, I think I mentioned about the real time lighting on mobile. Yeah. So that's maybe I'll show a bit of that as well. Yeah. So there you go. So that's with it baked up. Right, um, with a big GI. So now you have your proper light map. Like, okay, so that's not too bad. I've got two uh, light maps. Um, and this scene would be pretty optimized for mobile. If I ran it on the phone, I would probably not have any issues running it. Yeah, so, that's, so that's basically an introduction to my workflow. Uh, if you guys are interested later, you can come and ask me questions. Uh, I'll just show you guys here what I was thinking about. So,
do have to project that. This is one you have to see. So this scene actually has uh, both uh, light map information and uh, real time. <coughs> I, I think so. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not used to working with uh, one monitor. I'm all over the place. The uh, thing is. Uh, I need to, uh, a lot of times I'll uh, to close it, then then only the light map, the, the lighting tab which you are in. Okay, there's no... So this is uh, something that I managed to get running on oh, bikes. Okay, it's a bit dark on the screen here. Let's see if I can just yeah, that's probably as far as it will go, right? Yeah. So it's on. Uh, you can take a look uh, on the on the Samsung Gear VR how. Uh, it actually looks. Uh, I think the guys behind me probably have a better view over here. You can see how it actually looks. It, it doesn't look this dark. Uh, um, yeah, but you, you guys later on can give it a try. So it works quite well, uh, quite stable on mobile. So I think for certain use cases, right, it can be quite uh, effective uh, lighting it this way. So this, yeah, this is obviously all my VR uh, UI. Right. So um, later on, when you give it a try, you'll realize that one of the problems is the shadows flickering. When you, if, you ever, if you guys have ever tried to do mo um, shadows on mobile, you'll find that the real-time shadows always gives you problems. So uh, that's where you go to Asset Store for answers. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's yeah. So that's basically um, my workflow. You know, I hope you guys have picked up something and uh, you guys can. Um, change the way you look at uh, you know lighting in unity yeah. it's not that bad la. it's bad but it's not that bad you can work around it yeah so i guess as long as you see it as a challenge to yourself uh, right you can you can actually do a lot of things with it uh, if you do the right if, if you just patience is one thing uh okay another thing that i, I wanted to highlight right uh, is that always make sure that your scale is right um, if you model in the wrong scale Okay, basically, uh, I found out that Unity is uh, the, the new lighting engine, the new light baking engine, in Beast or, or, or whatever it's called. Um, right? And Lighten. Yeah, the old one was Beast, right? Yeah, Unity 4. Right, so with Unity 4, um, I don't think it was photon based, right? So, meaning that regardless of the scale, um, it didn't affect the time of render. But with uh, Unity 5, if you have a huge scene, that's why a lot of people complain about lighting with uh, terrains, right? Because terrains are so huge, right? And you try to light a scene which is like kilometers, right? And it tries to do it physically. Then it takes like, you know, three or four days, you know, and then the result looks shitty anyway. So, um, one way to get around this is actually to rescale everything down. I've done this before um, uh, with one of my projects because we had like a whole big um, city scene, right? And it was, so it was actually modeled to physical scale, right? So it was like, yeah, maybe hundreds of meters wide and, and it was taking ridiculous amounts of time to bake. And I was like, wow, what's going on? So then by, by messing around with the scale, by giving like a 0 0.001 import scale, right? Then suddenly the render time is at 10 minutes, you know? But then you have to adjust all the lights um, to not be so bright as well, you, you know? So it's all like balance. Uh. So that's a trick. If let's say you're finding that your render times are taking too long and if your scene is large, Try to reduce the scale. You bake, and then you go back to scale one. Yeah, so that's that's one of the tricks I use. Um, why SSD? Sorry. Another trick is why SSD. 
<laughs> no, I don't think SSD will help. Really, no, no, no. I already use the I will, my computer is SSD and it still takes help a long time. Yeah. So it's, it's mostly just the rendering and and um, uh, what else? Yeah, scale. Uh. So when you do model stuff, right? Uh, I think it's very easy to forget to do in scale. Unity works on a uh, metric, I think, a uh, meter. So every one unit in um, Unity is one meter. So when you do your modeling, you know, if you do it um, in inches or whatever, right, it's always good to just uh, set. You can set, like in 3D Max, right, I will set my system units to meter, and then I'll model in another whatever unit. Uh, you can have the display units as another um, scale. Right. So that means that all the information that goes into Unity will be accurate. So when you do the baking and, and you do the setup, um, it's always accurate. Right? So I think with the, at the last VR event, uh, where was it? Wednesday. Uh? Yeah, there was a team and then they were working on a really cool game where it's like this Sona thing, right? it's like a horror game. And they were saying that they were having a lot of problems in VR, especially with scale, right? Uh, where things look weird, right? Um, like because you have the depth perception and if, if, if it looks like you're standing too low or too high or things feel like the scale is, is weird then the whole experience would be wrong and because it's so physically accurate um, we always have to be very mindful to model as accurately as possible to real world yeah, which, is, which is very hard I'm not a very um, disciplined modeler I, I don't really just, yeah, just go but I think it's a good uh, trait to have to, to be very disciplined in how you build a model. Yeah, so those are the tips uh, that I would, I, would, I would give you guys. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yep. So I noticed the first example you gave was actually a rather small room. Yeah. I've run into so many problems with black spots in the small rooms. Yeah. So, so at that point what you do right, is you delete all your lights and you start from scratch. <laughs> no, really, really. Because because what happens is that, I mean, you saw how quickly I, I, I set up. Because I've already got my system in place, right? I understand what's going on. But sometimes all your settings get screwed up. Uh, and then you spend like two or three times more trying to fix the problem than if you started out from scratch. So what I normally do is I'll just copy the models and I'll start a new scene. Then everything is like default. You, know, you start from square one again you know, and then you don't make the same mistakes. Um, yeah, I think it's, it is good to spend some time to try to solve those problems, but um, you start from scratch again. Yeah. So just, just, just slowly start with your one light. You know? um, don't try to make it too complicated. You know? Start with your skybox or start with your directional light and then build up from there. Don't, don't um, get ambitious and then you put in 30 or 40 lights and then things get messed up. You know? Because things will get messed up, you will get things like black spots, <coughs> And, and all this uh, nonsense. So, uh, firstly, you know, when you, okay, well, one, one of the things I do as well is in my modeling um, software, I will build two copies of the, of the file. Uh, so there will be a duplicate, right? One of them will be the final one, and then one of them will be the white uh, material. Right? Use the white material object uh, when you're doing your lighting. Right? So, so you can immediately see when there are problems. Right. If you if you if you have it all textured up, um, then you may actually not spot certain things. Right. So start with the white uh, um, room, uh, and then the, the the black spots could be because the scale is wrong. It could be there's there's so many things it could be. So just take um, scale into account. Um, white diffuse material, um, and then just put one light, and see if there, your black spots are there. Right. And you put in another light and see if they're there. Yeah, so that, that's how you do it, you slowly build it up, so that you, you, you know where you went wrong. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, do yeah? you use uh, ambient occlusion made in Maya? Um, so, <coughs> see, it can be tricky to do ambient occlusion. Unity, the indoor ambient occlusion is not too bad. Right? You can get away with doing it. Uh, there are some sliders there, you have some amount of control. Uh, but if you want to apply a map from external uh, source, right, it can be very, it can be complicated, right? So uh, I haven't really looked into that, but I'm sure it can be done. But it's just a matter of like finding how to do it. Yeah. You can, if you want, you can put it into your texture itself. 
Yeah, but <coughs> I find that when you bake everything into one texture, right, then you have you lose a lot of control uh, over the whole uh, scene, you know. Because for for mine, I like to keep everything uh, for material basis, right. Uh, so if you, if you use like another software to bake all the information in, right, then you cannot just change this material of this. Like let's say at runtime, right. Um, I want to change this uh, material to another one uh, like that, All right? So I want to show the flow. Oh, I can change it. So it it's hard if you bake from somewhere else. It's very hard for you to because you basically combine your whole diffuse map into one big map. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Mm, no problem. Is this setting for shadows like set important or not important? Yeah, we cheat it. The, the, the global illumination one, right? Do you use that? Uh, not yeah, really, uh, yeah. Okay, one thing so about shadows, right? <coughs> important thing to note uh, is, uh, okay, I go back to my simple scene. I think you're talking about, um, is it per object? Yeah, per object. Right? The, this one, right? Is it this? Important GI? Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, so I found that to be like, not really lah, doesn't really do much. What what I do find is, is, is helpful where shadows are concerned is uh you have your <coughs> some lights you can control like I think directional light you can control the how hard the shadow is, right? Certain lights you can uh big shadow radius. So this can be very useful. Uh so what this does is it actually changes uh I just do, maybe I can show you a quick example. Is this a special light? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Is this a special light? Or this? No, this is just a, a spotlight. Okay. Yeah, so it's just one of the diffuse, uh, uh, one of the default um, Unity lights. Uh, it's, right here. it's not. Okay, actually, uh, quite a lot of them do. They are the big shadow radius. Really. So this will determine how harsh the shadow will be. So if you want a very soft shadow, um, you push up the number, right? And then you get a nice, uh, diff, like a, like if the light, as if the light was very far away. Um, and then if you want a hard shadow, you can put it at zero. Black color. Mm, but so like some weird. Oh, it's like a, but about which platform are you? Um, it's for Android, is it? Sometimes it could be. It could. It could have to do with like. <coughs> sometimes uh, you get issues with uh, your graphics emulation and stuff like this. So this could be. Uh, what what are you using? Windows base or Mac base? Windows. Windows uh, right. So. This sometimes does solve those problems for me. Uh, I'm not sure if it will for you as well. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a strange problem. Only when you run. Uh, in editor, it will be black. black. Then when you press run, then okay. Wow, that's a strange one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one must go and look at the problem. Uh, and see. But so every time, is it always, is it always the case? It's just, uh, I think it could be because it's true. Version control, so probably it's picked by some other guy. Ah, uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when you are uh, dealing with version control, then yeah, you always have you always have problems like that. Yeah. So I've been trying to get the Unity. Uh, they've got this new uh, version control thing, right? Uh, collaborate, right? Um, but uh, I've been trying to bug them for it, lah. But so far, they're using it. Yeah, I'm using it. Yeah. Issues, right? Yeah. So actually, normally at that point, right, I'll just clear it and then I build it again. But then you have to take your, your, those few hours to do it, lah. Uh, yeah. Uh, very hard with with Git. It's, it's quite hard to manage. Uh, actually, sometimes I still use the the legacy, the Unity SS server. You know? Yeah, because it, it, it handles the these files a little bit better. Sometimes, but it also goes wrong, lah. Uh, Any more question? <laughs> What was the feedback from the people from the clients that tried the first time? They, <coughs> here we are, 
Mm -hmm. So okay, I think that that uh, there is a lot of different opinions, right? Uh, with VR in general, uh, I've met people who absolutely hate it, right? Uh, they don't want any, have anything to do with it. Uh, we've met people who uh, absolutely um, enthralled by it. You know, they are they, wow, you know, and, and, and then they'll they call their bunch of friends and everybody wants to try. You know, so so they are. Different pockets of people. You know. Some people can't take the uh, experience for too long. Some people are quite okay with it. So I think it's very hard to judge at this time. Uh, I think that this is quite a common feedback, right? Like, um, it's hard to, 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 to have a definite like, feedback. I mean, generally, people find it really cool, right? Um, but, the, but I find personally, like, the engagement time is. People don't engage in it for too long a time, right? Whether it's discomfort or uh, detachment, or, yeah, there's so many factors. Um, but that's that's also one of the reasons why for us, uh, all all the content is available on non VR as well. So just on your phone or your tablet, right? So we feel that that's quite important um, because if you just go VR only, then you're kind of like stuck. You know, and then you're, you're designing just for VR and you expect people to put VR. I think when you go in with the expectation of like, oh, you got, you, you have to put this on, right? People don't like that. You know, if you say that, no, you can just use your phone, right? Uh, they tend to be a bit more comfortable and then they put it on. You know, you know, so it's, it's a bit of that psychological uh, thing as well. Yeah, but then, but then also, right, then you have the problem of like designing for both, right? So you have to make sure the experience is. Uh, equivalent or good enough on either. So, is there any like lighting difference or something with you for VR or for just a really regular tablet? Uh, the lighting? Yeah, no. lighting or something. No, it's absolutely the same. So, content wise, it's the same. Um, with Gear VR, I would say that um, you can get away with uh, having more objects in the scene, having more draw calls, uh, having heavier scenes, more textures, higher resolution. Because <coughs> I think the phones are pretty. Powerful, the new central phone, and I think that the Oculus uh, is, is, it gets access to a lot of low-level stuff, right? So you it uses a lot of the hardware of the phone, yeah. So so it gives that extra horsepower. So where yeah. where do you hit the limit? Like texture-wise. So texture-wise, actually, um, I've never found textures to be a problem. Mm. Um, not as much as I have with. Um, Trying to do fancy things, right? Like a real time live, real time reflection. Uh, if you want to do a post processing effect, well, that will kill, you know, you'll go from like 100 frames a second to like 5 frames a second, you know, when you want to do some crazy thing like that. So, textures, I think that right now the state of like our tablets or phones actually can handle the texture memory. It's more the GPU that can't keep up. So, that's why I think. So I think we will put this discussion offline. You guys can continue. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, that's what. Yep. So okay, so we'll that's the end. Of